I don't know if this is true But every time I look back on the years I feel like I wasted my youth How did I get so cold? He would come under the cover of night, sneaking into children's rooms, camps, or youth hostels. There he attacked the sleepy boys who had not yet reached puberty. The young boys would wake up to a man dressed in all dark clothing, a mask, and gloves. To the boys that ended up alive after encountering this monster, he became known as the Black Man, or the Mask Man. Due to this, the first attacks were thought to be that of a child's wild imagination until boys started ending up dead. Hello, my name is Holly. Welcome to the Murder She Shed, the place we honor the dead right from my she shed. Hit that subscribe button for more rarely told true crime right here with this crazy lady in my she shed, usually twice weekly. And I've been doing so much outside. Sometimes it's been once weekly, but so much to do, so little time. Anyway, just hit that subscribe. I'll be here waiting for you. Maybe. Well, I might. Unless I get bored, I'll be here. Let's get right back into the story of the German serial killer, Martin Ney. On March 3rd, 1992, a student walking down a dark hallway in a dormitory encountered a masked figure. The boy began to scream, and the masked man ran out of the patio door. Only a few days later, 11-year-old boy was awoken by the same masked man who had entered through a window of the children's home. He walked up to the young boy's bed. The boy would tell officers, I woke up one night to someone stroking my thigh and groin with a hand. I tried to push the perpetrator's hand away and stop him from touching me. He then screamed after he looked up to see the intruder's terrifying mask. I can't even imagine that mask does look terrifying. The masked man quickly slid back out the window into the dark night. There will be five appearances of the masked man in March of 1992, with the fifth encounter ending in a murder. This made authorities finally investigate the case. The children said the masked man was a tall, stocky man with a deep German-speaking voice between the ages of 30 and 50. He was said to be well-versed in northern Germany. The man wore dark clothing, a mask, and gloves, and seemed like a man out of a child's nightmare. In the early morning of March 31, 1992, 13-year-old Stephen Jar disappeared from a boarding school. That night, the house manager heard conversations coming from Stephen and his roommate's room at half past nine. She wanted to come in, but the door was locked. She knocked. Stephen opened it. He was about to go to bed. Shortly thereafter, she realized the door was locked again. That was against the house rules. She reprimanded the children severely and confiscated the key. The next morning, his pajamas were found in a lounge with an open window, and Stephen was nowhere to be found. Stephen, known as a class clown to his classmates, was sent to the boarding school by his dad because of his failing grades. Stephen was always choking around so much that he had let his grades slide. Stephen's dad would regret his decision when Stephen's body was found by two individuals walking a dog. On the afternoon of May 3, 1992, in the city forest of Burden, dogs scratched a body free. A dead child, 13-year-old, bare abdomen, hands tied behind his back, was found buried in the sand of the Verdon Dunes. Only a little over a month after Stephen's body is found, in the morning of April 29, 1992, children tell their teachers that a man was creeping through the corridors and shone a flashlight into their rooms. All doors and windows are closed and locked the next morning. The teachers suspect these are just fantasies after the campfire the night before. The police are not notified. Several encounters of the masked man touching victims during the night are reported in the next couple of months. On July 24, 1995, a year old Dennis Rostell disappeared from the Selker Noor camp near Schleswig. Martin is said to have rented a holiday home nearby at the time and kept Dennis captive for a while before strangling the little boy, essaying him repeatedly and then strangling him. Then on October 29, 1992, a boy is wakened by the masked man with a 20-centimeter the man forces him to a recreation room where the man essays him. The masked man referred to himself as the night ghost, and the boy was threatened that he would die if he told anyone. Attacks continue to occur throughout the years. 
Then, in September 2001, nine-year-old Dennis Klein went missing. Dennis was a small blonde boy with big eyes, a narrow neck, and slightly jug ears. He was known as a mama's boy, a shy boy. Dennis loved soccer, Pokemon, and grocery shopping with his mother. On Monday, September 3rd, 2001, Dennis is excited to be at school camp with his class. First day at camp, it was rainy, so all the children stayed inside. But the next day, Dennis has a blast. It was beautiful outside, so Dennis and his classmates play a game, hiding little paper pigs in the woods. In the evening, they dress up and dance in the school camp disco, a basement room. The windows are darkened with blue bed linen. By 10 p.m., Dennis is worn out from the day's excitement, so he goes to his room, the second room down the hallway. Soon after, the last photo of Dennis holding his Pokemon is taken, and he looks very excited to be at camp. Then the light goes out. At 12 o'clock, the rooms are inspected. Everything looks okay. It's quiet in the home. The doors are locked. Two windows in the toilet room have been smashed for a long time, covered with cardboard. A large swing window in an empty room is tilted. It can be opened to a gap of about 30 centimeters. Of the 10 keys to the home, only nine have been there for years, but the home chairman will only notice this later. The next morning, Dennis doesn't show up for breakfast. A teacher heads to Dennis's room, but the bed is empty. Not a single piece of clothing is missing. Not shoes, not pocket money. None of the five roommates heard anything. At 8.05 a.m., the shore of the bathing lake is searched. Shortly thereafter, the police are called. At 10.30 a.m., the first helicopters are circling over the forest. Almost 200 police officers and helpers are looking for Dennis, but in vain, because there was no sign of him anywhere. Nobody knows how Dennis disappeared from the home. Leaflets are distributed. After a week of searching, cadaver dogs are deployed. Over 1,700 helpers are involved. In the late afternoon of September 19th, the phone at the Zevin police station rang. A man found something strange while looking for mushrooms. He doesn't want to make a fool of himself, but it could be a body. Officers drove to the site where they found a body that looked like a doll. At first glance, until the officers seen bugs and then realized, yep, that's a body, all right. Sadly, it was Dennis. Dennis lay bedded between two oaks, a naked bundle, only his underwear on his body, hidden under thick undergrowth opposite a bramble bush between the lonely farm track used by hunters to hunt wild boar. On the cloudy afternoon of September 27th, four elderly men in black robes Black bonnets on their heads carried a pine coffin containing little Dennis's body. A profile was done on the masked man again describing the perpetrator, who was initially described as athletic but had gained weight over the years. He mostly traveled by car and appeared to have experience dealing with children. It was assumed that he was single and socially integrated, although a tendency toward boys could well have been noticed in his immediate family and circle of friends. What was also noticeable was a certain carelessness on the part of the perpetrator who exposed himself to the risk of being discovered at many crime scenes but yet left no traces behind. The investigators therefore assumed an intelligent perpetrator who probably carried out his actions in an environment he was very familiar with. Martin W., a boy who was visited by the masked man in his parents' house in Bremen in October 1995, would be the link in finding the masked man in 2011. He was 10 years old on October 22, 1995, when he woke up to the masked man standing beside his bed. Martin slept on a bottom bunk, and his older and younger sister slept on the top bunk of the bunk bed. They slept together on top while he slept on the bottom. Well, this day, his older sister happened to not be there. She was gone, and the little sister was too scared to sleep by herself. So, he let little sis sleep down in the bottom bunk with him. So, on that night, he happened to be sleeping right beside his little sister. But that was fortunate for him. It was dark that night, and the only light came from a clock radio in his room. The masked man grabbed his shorts and started touching him. Martin froze and couldn't scream because the figure had terrified him. The masked man kept saying, don't worry, I won't hurt you. He did the only thing he could think of and reached 
under the covers and pinched his little sister's bottom. She screamed and it scared the intruder so much he jumped and then ran down the stairs. His mother heard the commotion and as she was coming to the room, she seen the shadow of the masked man running downstairs. At the beginning of February 2011, Martin was sitting in front of his computer when a memory suddenly came to him. A few weeks before that drastic event, he had taken part in a Red Cross youth camp. and One of the supervisors had asked him to draw pictures of his house. Who was in which room and who sleeps where and where the furniture was and where the stairs are. And he knew 80% that the supervisor's name was Martin because it just happened to be his first name too. Martin notifies authorities with the news. The officers quickly find out who the supervisor was, Martin Knight. On April 13, 2011, they arrested Martin and got a search warrant for his home. The next morning, Martin cried and confessed that he was the masked man. Thousands of child images were found on his computer, including ones of the dead boys. He confessed to the three murders in a series of around 40 essays. Martin Knight was born in Bremen in December of 1970. His parents separated early. According to former neighbors, his father was said to have been very violent. Martin's mother, a nurse, was a single mother who lived in an unadorned skyscraper with her two little boys. His mother became pregnant with a third child who was a boy. Because the apartment was crowded, Martin had to share a room with his brother and was never allowed to have any friends over. When Martin Nay was 16 years old, he blackmailed five families, including his family doctor. The tone of his letters are very cold. We could kidnap one of your children and demand a ransom from you. In order to save you this burden, we make the following proposal. You give us 150,000 marks and we don't kidnap your children. If you reject their proposal or alert the police, one of your children will die. He urges the parents to place an ad with a prescribed text in the paper. If this ad does not appear, you will soon have a death in your family to mourn. For this act, Martin is sentenced to eight weeks of community service. That's it. He then graduates from high school and studies mathematics to become a teacher because he really needs to be with kids since he threatened them as a youth. He was very quiet and reserved as a student. People around him described him as nice, reserved, helpful, accurate, and intelligent. When his criminal record was wiped from the educational register at the age of 24, Martin then applied for a foster sign in 1995 at the social service office in Bremen. He was able to become a foster dad to a young boy due to the small number of available foster parents. Even after his record, yummy, doesn't that figure? Sadly, it does. The boy lived with Martin until he's old enough to leave, but according to the boy, he was never essayed by Martin, so that's a positive. As an adult for his rest, he had lived alone for 21 years and was a student teacher. As a teacher, he was experienced in dealing with children. Most recently, he worked in adult education, and he is said to have also been active as a youth worker. Children he looked after during vacations and sports camps described him as a super guy, a good buddy, nice, funny, caring like a big brother. In his apartment, Martin had a striking number of children's toys. A whole army of colorful fantasy figures made of surprise eggs, building blocks, handicraft paper, firecrackers, and a puzzle, and also a bottle of baby oil on his dresser. A neighbor would say during the trial he had a striking amount of children that he brought to his apartment. Big clue there. He called himself Gerd X on internet forums. The picture in the profile of Gerd X shows a half-naked boy who puts his hands in front of his face as if he were crying. One of Martin's posts on the forum said, Let the little children come to me. Another post read, Once the field is mown, Gerd X goes to the next boy. And a more detailed post read, Little boy fought back and died, but no pain helped him, and oh, you just have to suffer. 
For almost 20 years, he managed to maintain the image of the friendly, smiling, nice, reserved student teacher to the outside world. But underneath the mask was a monster. Martin A. was sentenced to life in prison on January 10, 2013. And hopefully, he rots in prison because he definitely deserves to. Evil, evil man. What blows my mind is he was able to become a foster parent. Just too easy to become a foster parent, I feel like, in every country. So sad. Anyway, guys, I love y'all and I hope y'all have a blessed week. And uh, just be nice and kind to others out there because you never know what they've been through. And I guess I'll go get Simon and y'all can tell him bye. Why not? Guys, my chair's not getting tall enough. This is fun. I'm always having fun. And the murder she shit. I'm too short. Jeez, when you're short, you gotta do something to add the height so your chair don't bring you up. I'm gonna try to jump up here again. Oh, good thing I'm not real old yet. I had broke something just then. Now I gotta catch my breath. All that jumping around did me in. I look fatter than a flipping pancake. I gotta lose weight. Drinking too much Dr. Pepper does that to you. Let's give this a go. Is that what the chat? That chapter says, that guy on that chapter, let's give it a goo. That's what he says, let's give it a goo. I watch him occasionally. <laughs> let's give it a goo. I should say, stick with my own accent, huh? I need some lipstick on, yo. Can't wear black, not have red lipstick. That's just wrong and simple. It breaks all the cardinal rules, I think. I think. What do I know about cardinal rules? Okay, I'm not a nun. In the carnal scenes or in the, anyway. uh, never mind. He was said to be well versed in northern Germany. I'm supposed that means that he spoke northern German accent really well. Going by my southern accent, I'm sure I'm well versed in southern speak. So yeah. Let's leave all that out. Never mind. From the Selker near camp near Schwitzwick. Schwitzwick. Let's, let's try that again. Maybe I should just not try to do German. <sighs> I'm sorry when I'm going to mispronounce this. I forgot to look it up. I'm not German. I'm just Southern, so excuse me. Disappeared from the Selker Nor camp near Schleswig. More Martin is said to have rented, and I like that one, and then I messed up Martin. Screw me. Screw me. Let's screw me. Don't. I'm just joking. My husband wouldn't like that. I guess it'd be myself because I'm talking myself. What the? My lipstick on the back of this thing. I'm so organized. If I just took my ADD medicine, everybody, everything would be going great. But I got to skip on. <sighs> See, I can't even speak when I don't take my ADD medicine. My brain, but my brain's just going everywhere. Oh, God dang it. The masked man referred to himself as the night ghost. And the boy was threatened that he would die if he told anyone. Well, he's got a high opinion of himself, night ghost. Like the night rider or something. Thinks he's cool, I guess. I don't know. The first day at camp, it was rainy. <coughs> <coughs> Try that again. It was beautiful outside, so Dennis and his classmates play a game, hiding little paper pigs in the woods. Sounds like a blast. What I know, I'm not a kid anymore. Maybe it would have been, but I don't remember ever hiding paper pigs in the woods, but I'm not German either. So maybe that's what y'all do over there. I don't know. Jump up here where they can see you. Can you jump up here? Jump up here, like you always do. Here you go. I know, it's hot. It's too hot. He's like, it's too hot, Mom. I don't want to be like all over you, Mom. It's too hot. Simon says bye. He says he loves y'all and he hopes y'all have a blessed week. We both love y'all. We're hot here in Oklahoma. I don't know if y'all are hot where you are, but we're definitely hot. Not the good kind of hot. The bad kind of hot. So humid, I can't even, it feels like I'm in Florida or something. I can't stand the humidity. Usually it's not this humid in Oklahoma. I don't know what's going on. No has no fury here to this week. It has a lot of fury. Is that how it goes? Get blonder every day, I think, sometimes. All right, say bye. Yes, we're gonna go bye bye. I don't know if this is true.
But every time I look back on the years I feel like I wasted my youth How did I get so 